A team of Kenyan lawyers and representatives of victim families from the Ethiopian Airlines crash is in the United States of America for the commencement of a case that seeks to have American maker Boeing punished for negligence that led to the fatal crash. The case is currently in a discovery stage where legal teams of both Boeing and the victims will be exchanging crucial documents before a legal battle expected to last up to two years can begin. Sam Gituku is in Washington and earlier on sent this report. In Seattle, Seattle is the capital city of Washington State, and Washington State is in the western part of the United States of America, and this is, so to speak, the home of the Boeing company. Boeing, of course, has been that company that has been running uh, the business of uh, coming up and designing aircrafts that have uh, sort of uh, dominated the airline industry. It has been 103 years, and right now we are inside uh, one of the aircrafts. This is Boeing 747. We just be in a position uh, to look at some of the things that we can see. Of course, this being the inner part of uh, an aircraft, if, if you can just move and see uh, some of what uh, the structures that you will see. They're very complicated sort of uh, uh, engineering, of course, indicating the, um, the sophisticated nature of how to design the aircraft, and of course, reminding you uh, what goes in in coming up with a plane but that's not the reason why we're here we're here because of the uh, what you will recall the Ethiopian Airlines a crash back in March 2019 that is 8302 we're here with uh, some of the lawyers that are representing some 10 victims from the Kenyan families and uh, they have been here meeting with their uh, Kenyan uh, or other American uh, counterparts they are in they will be in a position to exchange some of the documentation that they have gathered in as far as how far they have come in preparing for that case and what they are looking for is that uh, they have to sue the Boeing company for punitive damages, saying that um, there was some level of negligence that was um, affected in the in the crash that saw uh, 737 Max, uh, of course, uh, going down in the month of March 2019 in Ethiopia, as well as in October last year. Says the Airbus Neo. The problem with the Boeing Max 8 is that the engines, as you can see, are very large, so they had to be mounted in a different place on the wing. That led to instability during flight tests of the Boeing Max 8, and the aircraft started to pitch up when it was taking off. So in order to compensate for that, Boeing decided to introduce a system called uh, the MCAS system, which changed the angle of attack of the aircraft so that the aircraft would not stall and take off. Unfortunately, it relied on one sensor, information from one sensor, to tell the MCAS system when to make the flight corrections instead of using information from both sensors on the aircraft. If they had information from both sensors feeding the MCAS system, we believe this accident could have been prevented as well as the Lion Air crash. This is in federal court in Illinois, which is where Boeing is headquartered. And we have made, as well as most of the other plaintiffs, the strategic decision that that's the best court for this case based on damages that are available under Illinois law. In this case that we have against Boeing and all this defendant, all we have to prove is a little bit above 50 percent, just a little slightly, more probably true than not. That's the standard. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt, so the standard is much lower. Right, and so those are just some of the voices of the lawyers that are leading this process from here in Seattle. And of course, they are being joined by uh, two lawyers from Kenya, that is Rungo Kangatu, is also the senator of Moranga County, and Gresham Mwanza, who have come here together with representatives of the victims uh, to be in a position to start off this process. But you'll be hearing more from us uh, here in the Washington uh, state of the U.S. For now, my name is Sam Gitoko.